Now this year probably is gonna be called the Year of the Enders because today we have another Ender to share with you. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at the Creality Ender 3 Max Neo. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now the Ender 3 Max Neo has a 300 by 300 by 320 bed. Uh, 25 point automatic bed leveling, which is gonna be pretty cool. Uh, the other thing it has is it has a glass uh, print surface. Now we went ahead in ours and upgraded it to PEI because that's what we prefer to print with, but it comes um, out of the box with that glass sheet. Uh, the print nozzle, we're talking about 260C as well as 110C on the bed. Max uh, print speeds of 120. It has a Bowden type, um, I would say extruder, right? So it has not a direct drive, but you'll notice that this has a Bowden type extruder, but it's full metal. Uh, it also has a four millimeter print nozzle. It has quiet printing, but one of the things I'll tell you uh, now, it is a little bit louder. Uh, still under 50 dB than some of the other printers that we've looked at from the Ender line. It does give you some really good flexibility when it comes to printing, PLA, ABS, and PETG. It has dual synchronized Z-axis as well, filament runout sensor, right, and power recovery as well. Now the design language for the Ender 3 series is very similar. If you're going to see one, you're going to recognize them really quick. So a couple of things that you'll notice here is that you do have a display. This display uh, is a color display, but it is dial based. So it's not a touch screen and it has a very familiar operating system that we've seen on the Ender uh, 3S1 line. Uh, you'll also find that there is a little storage area here where you can store all your parts, which is great. Um, everything um, is dial based so that you can do all of your adjustments. What I really like, there's no tools. Now, one of the things I did change out and you'll notice on mine is that I do have a PEI sheet uh, because the Included glass sheet. Uh, I just prefer the PEI sheet. So this is the actual sheet that came with it and we just replaced it because we just like the PEI sheets especially because of you know the flex feature and being able just to pop off prints really easily. Now you do have in this area right here uh, the ability to actually load your prints. Let's take a closer look at that really quick. So we'll go ahead and shift positions really quick. You'll notice here that we have our standard SD reader, and then you have a USB port here that you can use as well. And on this side, we'll go ahead and move the box. You do have your filament spool holder on the side, and this is gonna be feeding into the uh, uh, extruder that you'll see in a second. Now for this review, we are using Creality PLA, and uh, this is actually a matte gray PLA. Um, it basically is feeding uh, through this filament sensor uh, that's right here, then going into a full metal uh, again, uh, drivey here that's feeding through this Bowden tube into the actual print head. You have your CR touch here. It has a 25 point CR touch. So uh, bed leveling has been super easy with this one. All you do is you level it. After you level it, you adjust your uh, Z for your middle and then you're done. Now in the background, you'll notice that I have a CR10 Smart Pro. Um, in the back and you notice filament spools on the top. Over here I have a 3S1. This 3S1 also has a filament spool on the top and this one has it here on the side. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm, I've gotten used to having things on the top. I may print something and put it up there, uh, but that's one big difference or not a big difference. That's one of the differences. Now on the back of the printer, you'll notice that we do have dual Z. Uh, I like that because it's gonna give you really nice stable prints. Um, I did switch out, as I mentioned, the actual bed. I left the clips on the back because they're good guides just to know where the sheet has to go. Uh, back is very, very clean. I do like the way the actual cable, uh, let me push this forward right here, this cable right here, how it kind of comes over to the side. Uh, some of the other uh, printers that I've seen, this cable just comes straight back. And if uh, there is, let's say for example, wall or as it continues to go back and forth, it kinks and then you start having uh, heat bit issues. This uh, printer, you don't really have that problem as it curves over to the side. So as it moves forward and back, I don't see a lot of tension being put on, on this cable right here. That's pretty nice. Now the menuing system is a very familiar menuing system. And as we take a look at, you notice you have your print, you have your prepare. And if you go into print, it's just gonna take you directly to choose some of the prints that you have on the micro SD. If you go into prepare, um, you can disable your stepper, you can go auto home, your Z offset, and then you can also preheat heat, uh, your PLA, ABS, or uh, go into cool down, as well as your language selection. We'll go, and you know what we'll do is, as we're going over this, we'll go ahead and preheat. Now, the other thing that you have going on here is that you also then have uh, your control, right? So if we go into the control area here, you'll be able to see configuration information, uh, temperature um, adjustments that you can make, and then uh, reset and then info about the firmware of the printer. Now, at the very bottom here, you can see the actual temperature gauge or at least, um, you know, where your nozzle is and your bed is. And 
it, it heats up relatively fast. The one thing I will say is that there is, in this printer, there's more white noise being generated than some of the other printers that we've had. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a sound meter in so that you can see what I'm talking about. But there is a, um, a fan noise going on. And right now we don't have any much noise, white noise going on here. So I'm just gonna bring this in and then stay quiet so you can see what I'm talking about right here. Let's go ahead and bring this in focus. All right, so that's level DC, uh, DB. It's right under 50 DB, but it's a little bit louder than some of the other printers that we work with. Now we're gonna talk about the print quality. So I have uh, two prints that were on the SD and one that I sliced myself. So let's talk about, first of all, the ones that were on the micro SD. So here we have the Rabbit. And the Rabbit is a print that we typically see uh, very often on Creality printers. And it came out very clean. You can see the seam is right here, but you see very, very smooth. Uh, layer lines are, are really, really hard to distinguish, but it's, they're definitely there, but it's super smooth. I really like the quality. Again, this is um, leveraging, again, the Creality uh, PLA. This is a uh, really, really nice uh, PLA. So that looks like, and if you look at that first layer, that's what that first layer looks like. Now, the next one that we're going to take a look at is the Benchy. So here's the Benchy. All these, again, are pre-sliced. Let me see what it looks like. You can see that there's some layer lines here going on, but this is something I think we can clean up. And you can see the first layer, very clean. See the, the back, the lettering there looks good. And arches on the top layer or last layer looks great. So overall, good quality here. And again, there's no tweaking. I haven't really done anything with the slice, again, but this was again pre-sliced. Now, the last one I'm gonna show you is the bearded skull. Now, this bearded skull that I have going on here is actually sliced on Creality, actually in Ultimaker 5.0. Uh, and what I'm also did is I increased this 25%. So it's actually 125 uh, to scale, right? So that's what it's set at from 100%, 25 more, 125. I filled this with 5% infill, actually 10% infill and it took 12 hours to print, right? So this is a 12 hour print. Now, if you look at the detail in the back of the hair, uh, detail is really good, right? So I really, it was, it was hard to find kind of like any, any defects, even though I see some small ones um, here. So very light defects. Now there's things that I have to do that I have to do a little bit tweaking. In my I have to t tighten some things, as you can see here, uh, some gaps. And then when you see in the front here, you can see some of the gaps here. I actually think that that is due to some of the uh, some of the nuts have to be uh, tightened a bit and we'll go ahead and, and look at what the overall quality is. But this is a really, really good, good quality print. Again, uh, stuck on the bed without any problem. So you can see how nice that first layer line is. No supports whatsoever. So even though, again, uh, there are areas here that could possibly use some supports, didn't have to worry about any supports. So again, this was a 12 hour print, 10% infill and you know we have some, some minor defects but i'm sure i can clean that up now what you see in the background now is actually the the print process so pretty standard like with any uh printer uh it's basically going to check its level after it checks its level it's going to do its uh, first uh purge line there and then it just is going to start to print so again the, i i can't tell it getting any louder when it starts printing so the actual white noise that i mentioned at the very beginning and then the noise while it's printing is pretty much the same. You really don't hear anything. And then with this bed, again, this PEI sheet, and uh, this is gonna give you, again, that flexibility to be able to pop things on and off, or in this case, off, really, really easily. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.